What is going on, Echo Base Network? Thank you so much for being here today. Sorry for the work camera that I got going on. I know it's not the high production that you guys are used to, but anyways, Kenobi, four days away. I could not be more excited. What we want to do in this episode is look back and see what is it that Disney canon says is going on with Ben Kenobi. Right now on Tatooine during this time, we got a little insight into that in E.K. Johnston's novel from 2016, Ahsoka. Let's check out and see either what canon they're going to follow or what they're going to break. But now we want to turn our focus to the character of Obi-Wan Kenobi and what he is doing. Thanks to E.K. Johnston's Ahsoka novel, we know just that. And I wanted to read this excerpt for you guys. So we are all up to speed on old Ben. Obi-Wan reached and found nothing. It took him a while to get this level of deep trance, and now that he was there, he was reluctant to pull up, even though he had failed once again. There must be other things he could do, other things he could see, other Jedi he could find and possibly aid. Images flickered across his eyes, Padme dying with the babies beside her, Yoda exacting a promise and giving him a new goal, Anakin burning on the volcanic slopes of Mustafar, blaming him for everything that had gone wrong. And it had all gone so wrong. Now he was back in the place where his carefully ordered life had begun to unspool. Not the exact location, of course. The Lars family lived in the middle of nowhere, and it was a part of Tatooine where Obi-Wan had never gone until he had brought Luke to them but it was the planet where his whole existence had been forever altered. He had gone to Shmi Skywalker's grave to apologize for losing her son. He had never met her, knew her only from Anakin's stories, but Qui-Gon had made her a promise, and Obi-Wan hadn't been able to keep it. As he stood there, looking at the stone, he felt an even deeper shame. Qui-Gon had left her there, a slave, and Obi-Wan had done everything in his power to prevent Anakin's return. It was only the love of a good man, here on Tatooine, that had saved her. The kind of love the Jedi were supposed to eschew. Yet it had done something the Jedi could not. But that was the past. What he did now, he did for an uncertain future and for hope. He had trusted in the light side of the Force for his entire life. There was no call for him to stop now. He found the center of his meditation, the quiet place, where there was no emotion no resistance, no worldly bonds. He rooted his feet in that place and reached again. Still, nothing. Obi-Wan shook himself out of the trance, more annoyed with his failure than disappointed, and found he was still sitting on the floor of Ben Kenobi's house. It was sparsely appointed, only the basic necessities. He hadn't been there long, but he got the feeling that even if he stayed until Luke Skywalker had a long gray beard, he still wouldn't accumulate many possessions. Tatooine wasn't that sort of place. He stood up, his knees creaking in a rather alarming fashion. Surely he wasn't that old yet. It must be the desert climate that affected him strangely. He got a small cup, filled it with water, and then returned to his seat on the floor. Something caught his attention, one of the few pieces of his old life that he had taken with him to his desert solitude. Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber. It was all that was left of the man who had been, often simultaneously, Obi-Wan's greatest annoyance, his brother, and his closest friend. If any other part of Anakin had survived, it was lost to evil and darkness. Obi-Wan couldn't save him any more than he could save any Jedi who was still at large in the galaxy, trying to find footing in the New Order. All Obi-Wan could do was make sure the child Luke survived to adulthood and train him if he exhibited his father's talents. He wondered briefly how the daughter was faring under Bell Organa's tutelage. Then he closed his eyes and took a deep breath. Down he plunged through memory and dream. There was Commander Cody handing him back his lightsaber only to blast him off of the cavern wall moments later. There was Anakin laughing as he made some improbably difficult landing, saving all of their lives again. There was Ahsoka, her hands on her hips, her endless questions challenging him at every turn. There was Palpatine, as Chancellor, his disguise so complete 
that Obi-Wan couldn't detect his villainy, even when he knew where to look. He made himself pass them all by. It was easier this time. It grew easier every time. That made his heart hurt, to think he was so fickle that he could turn his back on them and achieve his own ends. When he thought it, he heard Yoda, reminding him that his work was important, that he must focus on the future alone, obscuring the past, and even ignoring the present if he must. He had to break through. He reached the bottom again, the quiet place, where his doubts, loves, and fears were gone. Then he realized it wasn't the bottom, not quite. There was another level below. Obi-Wan let go of Ben Kenobi's house, the last place in the galaxy where a piece of Anakin Skywalker rested, and broke through the wall between life and death. It was dark there if he wanted to take anything with him or leave anything behind, but he wished for neither of those things, so he stood in the light. His senses were sharp. He could hear every sound at once, and also none of them. It took him a moment to focus on the voice he wanted most to hear. Alone and connected, aloof and hopelessly entwined, Obi-Wan had only a moment before he was wrenched back into the physical world, but it was long enough to renew his hope. Obi-Wan, said Qui-Gon Jinn. He was sure the voice was stronger this time. Let go. Thanks for taking a look back at this video with us and seeing what they are telling us that Ben Kenobi was going through and doing at the time that's the setting of the Kenobi show. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for being here. We will be live this Saturday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time, our show that we call EBN Live. You don't want to miss it. We'll be doing a full Kenobi breakdown. You can see our reactions over on Patreon, so we ask that you'll join us there, become a member. You could watch our, you could do our watch parties with us and everything that we, got, we offer you guys on our Discord server and all of the membership perks. So anyways, thank you so much. We are, you are. Echo Base Network. We'll see you guys on the next one. Echo 3 to Echo 7. Mono Money 3 to Echo Station 3 to 8. Mono Imperial 1 to 